the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hello everyone and welcome back to the course. In this section, we're going to take a look at how we put together a pivot table. Yes, finally, after a whole section on cleaning data, we've made it to the part where we actually create a pivot table. And we're going to start out in this lesson by taking a look at something called recommended pivot tables. Now, if you notice, the worksheet that I'm working in currently is called recommended underscore pivot underscore tables dot xlsx. And you'll find this file in the course files folder. And this file is basically just the clean version of our data. So if you haven't followed along all of the lessons in the previous section, you can simply open this one up and you're good to go for the next section. So now that we have our data in a table, let's take a look at recommended pivot tables. Now you'll find these on the insert tab. In the tables group at the beginning, notice we have two different options. We have pivot table and then we have recommended pivot tables. So what exactly is this option? Well, if we take a look at the screen tip, it says want us to recommend pivot tables that summarize your complex data. Click this button to get a customized set of pivot tables that we think will best suit your data. So that's exactly what it does. If we click this button, what we're going to get is this little pop up window. And let's just widen that out a little bit. That is going to recommend the pivot tables that Excel has determined are best for our data. So it's basically taken a look at our data and now it's suggesting different ways that we can organize that data using a pivot table. And in general, you'll find the one that's most appropriate for your data will be nearer the top of this list. And you can see that we have quite a few different recommendations. So the first one that I'm clicked on here, if I was to select this, it's basically going to create a pivot table for me and it's going to arrange my data in the following way. So here I can see that it's going to list out all of the regions and then it's going to give me the sum of the unit price. So if the analysis that I wanted to do was I wanted to see the unit price broken down by region, this would be a really nice quick way for me to create that pivot table. If we take a look at the second one down, this is summarized in a different way. So again, it's using the regions as my row labels, but this time it's doing a sum of the unit cost. The next one is different again. This time we have our row labels and I can see that these are grouped. Now, again, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but just know that when you have these little plus signs next to an item in your pivot table, it means that grouping is applied. And here, if I was to select this one, it's going to show me the basically the total profit for each region, the total unit cost and the total unit price. So if this is the type of information I'm interested in, again, that would be a great one to select. And I can carry on going through. So let's take a look at the next one because this is different again. This time it's showing me a summary in a slightly different way. So this time it's using the item type as the row labels. And then we have a sum of the revenue, a sum of the total cost, and then a sum of the total profit. And that's basically what each one of these are. It's showing me different ways that I could arrange this data and analyze it. And which one I choose is very much going to be determined by the type of information that I'm looking to get out of this pivot table. So with this one, for example, if I'm really interested in seeing the sum of the unit price for each of the item types, I would choose this one. And let's use this as our example. If I was to select this and click on OK, what Excel does is it gives me a new worksheet. So you can see it's just got the generic name of sheet two currently, and it automatically creates that pivot table for me. So it means that I haven't had to build this table myself from scratch because effectively I've used a little template. And that is what recommended pivot tables are. Now, just because you use one of these, it doesn't mean that you have to keep it in this particular format. I could choose to change the fields that I'm summarizing or move fields around. And again, we're going to get onto that in the following lessons. For the time being, I'm going to delete out this worksheet. And I just very quickly want to go back into recommended pivot tables because something else that you have in here is you do have the option right at the bottom to create a blank pivot table. 
So if you want to start from scratch and define what fields you're using in your pivot table, you can just click blank pivot table at the bottom just here. Again, Excel is going to create a brand new worksheet, but it's going to show us a blank pivot table, which we can then build using our fields on the right hand side. And this is pretty much exactly what we're going to do in the next lesson. I'm going to show you the different ways that you can create a blank pivot table, and then we're going to start adding in fields to analyze our data. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.